During this video we're going to take a look at how we interface I2C sensors into a Raspberry Pi Zero. We're then going to look at how we can use the Python code that you get within that environment pushed into Node-RED so we can use the simple to use dashboard UIs and then push the data to the cloud or to InfluxDB uh, database. So let's just have a look at these. These sensors are I2C so what it means is it's like a little network connection so it's not what we call point to point you can multi drop these sensors so this is showing you the wiring instructions so there's four wires uh, once we've made that initial connection this is showing a Raspberry Pi um, 3 or 4 here it's a free and we have power which is three volts and then we have our serial or loop communication if you like which is the uh, SCL and SDA um, wires once we've made that initial connection on what we call on the pins then we have these um, easy to use connectors where we can loop one sensor to the other because it's a network they just have to have um, different addresses I've got two boards this is the first one which is a light sensor that gives me two process values it gives me light and ambient I have to confess I'm, I'm not 100% sure the difference between two and this type of device would be used you know to control the brightness of your TV depending on the ambient conditions in your room as an example but we're just going to read it back as a process value and then the other one is probably one of the, the sensors that's used most in industry is vibration it's a, it's a it's a good means of seeing if your motors your gearboxes are performing the same throughout their life and and we can use vibration to detect anomalies again this is an i squared c sensor so it wires up in exactly the same way what we're doing, rather than wiring it into the Raspberry Pi here, you can see the light sensor will be would be wired into the Raspberry Pi, hardwired, and then we are going to take out the uh, connectors using these. Well, let's call them quick connect for want of a better word. And we're just going to use a standard cable to take that to the vibration sensor. These sensors are, are designed to to work locally. You know, we say network, but we're talking about 20 centimetres um, from each sensor to, to another and from the sensor to the Raspberry Pi. So it's not a true industry network, it's like a, an internal communication bus. Now, when I tried to put this into to Node-RED, I tried a few things. I mean, one of the first things was obviously I went to my Manage Palette and I typed in here i squared c now I, there are quite a few as you can see now, if you've got one and your the board that you're using is specifically um listed here then that's worth a go but there's not many it's not many it's a bit of a mess to be honest on the on node red the i squared c um uh functionality you have this generic I squared C, I tried this, it can scan the bus, it's got a node that scans the bus, but when you start to communicate into it, you have to put in commands, and it's, it's, it's a little bit flaky to use. So what I decided to do was to use Python code on, on the Raspberry Pi, and then call the Python code from within Node-RED. Yeah. And then I can start using standard visualization. So this is an introduction. What we'll do over the next few videos is we'll run through how how we're you know achieving that with these flows. I had some challenges. There's different ways of doing this. So I tried to do it with the execute function, and I'll go through on the next video you know, why I, why I couldn't do that specifically with vibration, not so much with light. I want to try and get my communications into node red as quick as possible and then that gives me the you know the the flexibility to do what I want with the data rather than you know reading the data every one second now that sounds fast but within you know 
certain environments where you're using vibration sensors, i.e. maybe on control valve systems, we may miss the vibration just reading it every second. So we need to be a lot quicker than that. And then we can use some averaging blocks within our flow to achieve the desired effect. We may also be able to start looking at some spe special fast Fourier transformation blocks within Node Red and doing something a bit clever with that. But we'll start off easy first. This vibration sensor is what we call a, a triaxial vibration sensor. So there's there's three sensors positioned on the board at different orientations. So it can detect the vibration if it's moving horizontally, vertically, or diagonally. Let's take a look at the, the finished product. We'll start with the, the light sensor. So I'm bringing back both values. It, it says that the units are lux. Um, I'm not too sure you know, that I... I'm convinced on that. I'll do a bit more research and tidy that up as we go through the videos. But let's start at the top here. I've got the status of the, the Python code. You can see here it's processing data and the status is good. If the um, device restarts and the Python code can't restart, then I'll have no data here, so I'll get an indication. I haven't programmed any alarms on that, so I'll, I'll add that to, to the code. Uh, but really it's there to, to make sure that we've got that interface between Node Red and the Python code on the Raspberry Pi. The process value is coming in. We've got a nice sunny day outside at the moment, so I've, this should be pretty quick reacting. If I open my blinds, there we flood the room with a bit of light. Sounds unusual in the UK that we have light, but we do. There we go. So we can see that that re is reacting quite nicely. I can clear the trend. It's a standard feature that I use and then I've put this on here. It doesn't make sense for this but I, all, I, all, I always put this indication on so you can start filtering. Uh, it makes more sense when we look at the next one. So let's look at vibration. The vibration we've got our three axes and I put a polar chart down here so you can see where the vibration is happening. I've got my vibration at the top. With a wife that works at for Anne Summers, I should have plenty of things that vibrate in the house, uh, so I'll sort out a better demo. But at the moment, if I just rotate the the sensor through different axes, you'll you'll see, you know, that this is now moving quite nicely, and I'm picking the data up quite quickly. I mean, I shouldn't be doing this; I should be having anti-static on. But yeah, it seems to be okay. So I'm getting a nice fast reaction there. So there you have it. That's our introduction. Please keep watching this channel because we're going to do a few more videos where we build this project up and uh, look at now how we can start really interfacing you know, with sensors. So I'll show you what hardware I'm using uh, and then how I'm making the connections, how I'm generating the Python code on, on the Raspberry Pi, how I'm linking that to Node Red and then we'll work through the flows that I'm using to generate these dashboards and calculate the averages and then we'll finish off by pushing that data into InfluxDB we'll try, haven't done it yet, we'll try pushing that to InfluxDB in the cloud and then we'll take our first look at Azure IoT Hub and how we can push this data into IoT Hub as well but for now, there's the introduction, I hope that's uh, whetted your appetite Thanks for listening. Don't forget to click on the notification bell and the like button if you like what you see. But for now, thanks for listening. Hope to see you again soon.